The shutdown standoff in day 10. We needed a little bit of a, a heartwarming story, right, John? We needed a different side to this whole shutdown thing. This is a good one. And we're about to introduce you to a man doing his part to keep Washington beautiful amid the shutdown. Chris Cox is the guy that you're seeing on your screen there. He took a lawnmower to, to the National Mall. He was cutting grass. He was uh, helping cut away some trees that were blocking off a path to the Lincoln Memorial. He's, in fact, going to tell you all of this himself because Chris Cox is our guest, and he is joining us now. Chris, I've been looking forward to this all morning. It is such a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you, Jen. I'm pleased to be here. So tell me a little bit about where you got this idea. Why did you show up to D.C. with a lawnmower and a chainsaw? Well, it was uh, the first day of the shutdown. Um, well, actually, I was here on an art show, and um, I was here on, uh, within a holding pattern, finishing up some commissions. And the first day of the shutdown, they were on the news talking about how vulnerable our memorials are. Well, I had to see for myself, and I threw my beach cruiser in the back of my truck, and I went to the Lincoln Memorial, and sure enough, it was a ghost town. And um, at first, my goal was just to prevent any vandalism that may happen uh, as a result of being understaffed. And so we have some photos of you. Um, I'd like, if we can, from our control room to bring up the photo where you have the lawnmower because I'd like you to explain to us how you transition then from maybe thinking, hey, maybe there, there needs to be some extra security here to, hey, I need to go to work. I'm going to go to work in the Capitol. Tell us when that switch happens. Jenna, I'm glad you asked that question. You know, um, I, it was a transition. And in order for me to play a more valuable role, I had to evolve. And so I... Um, you know, I wasn't trying to sign up for the janitor position, but I found myself there. And so I started cleaning up some overflow and trash cans and, um, that were leading into the memorial. Right beside the, the Vietnam Memorial, there were bottles blowing in trash, diapers, spit cups, half-eaten apples, you name it. And it was just, it was disgusting. And so I just got a couple trash bags, and before I knew it, I had bagged a couple hundred uh, trash cans and removed them from the property. And um, soon after that, I got a blower and started blowing all the trails and uh, everything evolved. The, uh, the next evening, I saw that there was a tree that had fallen down. So I showed up with uh, just a couple hours of sleep. I removed the tree from um, the, the pathway, which was a handicap accessible pathway. And then I got my lawnmower and I got busy. and. Um, <laughs> You know, Chris, a lot of people would walk by and, and see a scene like that and think, oh, that's too bad. There's a lot of trash around. But few would actually take action. Where does that come from in you? What, where do you think that deep down, what is that that made you actually act on it? Well, there, I'm glad you asked that as well, Jenna. There is a sentiment that has been in the back of American minds now for generations. Our, our president once said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? And as a civilian, you don't get a lot of opportunities to serve your country. And I saw this as an opportunity. And um, I was surprised I was the only one down there. And I just wanted, and before I could lead a movement, I first had to lead by example. And so I wanted to, I got in the trenches and just started making it happen. And my goal was to inspire Americans around the country to get up and to go out to their memorials and to the parks and to support the National Park Service. But instead of showing up with a picnic basket, I was hoping that they would show up with a trash bag and a rake, a firm handshake, a smile, and a good attitude. Well, it's certainly inspiring us right now, Chris, listening to it. Has, has anyone joined you um, on the National Mall? Has anyone tried to stop you? Well, yes, I had several volunteers show up on Sunday. Uh, Elizabeth Harris and her daughter, Rhiannon, showed up and picked up trash. The second evening of, my, um, of the trash detail, I had a, a gentleman from Northern Virginia named Jesse Braswell. He showed up and actually reached in his pocket and uh, bought some, uh, some supplies, some, some trash bags and some Windex and some paper towels. And you name it, we've wiped it down. That, that monument from the memorial, from World War II to the Lincoln, it's like, it was like a golf course, at least it was before I left. Now, Chris, before I let you go, I see that you have a, a little flag on your shirt, and we see you carrying a flag, and I understand that has to do with the Memorial Militia, which is, is what you're talking about, bringing people to, to give back a little bit to the memorials uh, surrounding us. We're hearing today on Capitol Hill that maybe there's a break in the shutdown, maybe there's something going on there. I'm just curious, if you had the opportunity to talk to the lawmakers today, what would you tell them? I would tell them that they need to, the voters are, are being, 
they're, they're being ignored. It's, these guys have got their, their, their egos are positioning them, and they're not able to make the right decisions. And they need to come together, and they need to unite this country because we get, we're getting black eyes right now around the world. We are the nation that feeds the poor and clothes, we put clothes on the people around the world. And we've got to keep our image intact. And whatever we do, we have to come together and unite as Americans and for the common goal of p pushing America forward, not letting it fall backwards. We've got to lead by example as we have in the generations before us. We can't become complacent and lazy. We have to be proactive. And we ha when we see something that needs to be done as Americans, it's our responsibility to do it, not ask permission. Don't ask forgiveness. If it's in your heart, if you are exercising American ideology, then move forward and make things happen. Well, I just want to point out to our viewers, you're a professional with the chainsaw as well, as an artist. And if folks want to reach you, they can do so by going to your Facebook page, which we have up on the screen. Chris, what is the address where they can find you? Well, um, you know, to be honest with you, I'm, I appreciate that prop, but I want to keep the message about the supporting the park service right now. Um, I don't want it to be about me or my career. I want to keep the message on the supporting the park police and coming together around the country to fortify our memorials and I'd like to just well, leave it at that. I'm I very flattered to be help on your it. show. It's, that's my fault. It's my call because I just thought it would be something that our folks wanted to reach out and, and, and talk to you. Because I'm sure, I just had this feeling, Chris, that there's going to be a lot of people that want to continue this conversation. So uh, well, you're, you're the best. Uh, it's great to have you. Highlight of our day for sure. And we look forward to having you back, Chris, all right? You're not a stranger now. You're part of the family, all right? So we look forward to having you back. Thank you. I'm very flattered, Jenna. Thank you so much.